Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-3211. Infohazard Warning the information contained within the following document is subject to an anomalous effect. The effect is activated by receipt of any direct information regarding SCP-3211, including details of the anomalous effect itself. As a result, in order to be effective, this warning message may contain no such details. Do not read this document without express permission from a member of Class 4 personnel assigned to SCP-3211. By proceeding to read this document you acknowledge, and accept that you are about to be exposed to an anomalous effect. Level 4 3211 authorization required. Proceed. You have 6 minutes to read this file. Countdown started. Item number, SCP-3211 Object Class, Safe Special Containment Procedures To reduce unnecessary exposure to SCP-3211, a warning message is to be placed at the start of this document. Level 4 authorization must be required to proceed. No information regarding SCP-3211 is to be present in any resources not exclusively available to researchers assigned to SCP-3211, including the warning message. Except in the event of an emergency necessitating knowledge of SCP-3211, no more than three members of the O5 Council and 10% of the population of any individual site are to have been exposed to information regarding SCP-3211 other than its existence. SCP-3211 is to be kept in a standard non-humanoid containment chamber. Access is to be limited to tests only. Description SCP-3211 is the corpse of a Columba Livia domestica, common pigeon. In the early stages of decomposition, SCP-3211 is attached to the center of a circular piece of concrete 1 meter in diameter and 4 centimeters thick. SCP-3211 and the concrete cannot be separated, although the object as a whole can move freely. A notable property of SCP-3211 is that it has similar properties to concrete. It has a similar hardness, mass, and an apparent inability to decompose further. Despite this, SCP-3211 is visually identical to a pigeon. SCP-3211 exhibits a slow-acting but potent perception-altering effect. During the first six minutes of exposure to SCP-3211, subjects are able to observe and record SCP-3211 without issue. Once six minutes have passed, subjects will immediately and permanently be unable to perceive any direct information associated with SCP-3211, or observe SCP-3211 itself. For the purposes of this document, subjects who have already been exposed to SCP-3211 for at least six minutes will be described as post-3211 and those who have been exposed to it for less than six minutes will be described as pre-3211. Post-3211 subjects are consistently able to recall, without issue, that SCP-3211 is a dead pigeon. However, only pre-3211 subjects are able to perceive SCP-3211 itself, or record new information about it. Of note is that descriptions of the object vary between post-3211 subjects. All pre-3211 subjects agree that SCP-3211 is a pigeon corpse, however, once these subjects pass the six-minute threshold, they will disagree on what it is. This also applies to documentation. Personnel viewing this document may report that it describes something else after it changes after six minutes of exposure. See Experiment Logs 3211-B and D for more details.
The mechanism through which SCP-3211 propagates this effect is currently unknown. Amnestics have proven to be effective on post-3211 subjects. They will forget SCP-3211 as expected, and upon re-exposure will be able to perceive it for an additional six minutes. Addendum 3211-A Experiment Logs 3211-B and 3211-D Experiment Log 3211-01 The purpose of this experiment was to establish a first-hand written description of SCP-3211 and then compare this description with another observer. D-68134 was given a pencil clipboard and a single sheet of paper. He was instructed to enter the containment cell and produce a written description of its contents. 010 middle dot D68134 enters the containment chamber with his eyes closed. 0 o'clock middle dot D68134 is instructed to open his eyes. 008middle.d68134 begins writing a description of SCP-3211. 604middle.d68134 expresses surprise that he can no longer perceive SCP-3211. He expresses anger at not being able to read what he has written. 625middle.d68134 is instructed to leave the containment chamber. The description produced by D68134 was retained as document 3211-01. Experiment log 3211-02. The purpose of this experiment was to compare the written description from experiment 3211-01 with another observer. D8834 is provided with document 3211-01 and instructed not to read it. 010 middle dot D8834 enters the containment chamber with her eyes closed. 0 o'clock middle dot D8834 is instructed to open her eyes and compare the object in the room to the description on document 3211-01. 118-middle.d8834 confirms that the SCP-3211 matches the written description. 545-middle.d8834 is asked to close her eyes. 615 middle dot D8834 is asked to compare the object to the written description again, from memory. 634 middle dot D8834 confirms that document 3211-01 still describes SCP-3211. 644 middle dot D8834 is asked to open her eyes. She reports that she is neither able to perceive the object nor read document 3211-01. Document 3211-01. The following is a transcription of document 3211-01, the text produced by D68134 during experiment 3211-01. There's a dead pigeon in the middle of the room. Damn, that sucks. I wonder how old it is. Why hasn't it decomposed? Addendum 3211-B, Empirical Data A collection of data has been recorded from SCP-3211 and is listed below. This data has been recorded only by pre-3211 researchers. Note that it is currently unknown why this data is considered important enough to retain on file. Data Type Observation Full Spectrum Spectrophotometry SCP-3211 Displayed Absorbances as Expected Mass 93.6 kg 
Hume measurement SCP-3211 has a Hume reading consistent with baseline reality. Magnetism SCP-3211 is not magnetic. Visual observation by D-9981 confirmed that SCP-3211 resembles a dead pigeon. Physical observation by D-9981 D-9981 was unable to lift SCP-3211 but was able to tilt the concrete circle. Response to basic questioning by D-9981 No response. Type capomimetic sentence detector weak positive response, consistent with dead animal. Incident log 3211-C on 2016-03-31, a researcher who was not assigned to SCP-3211, Dr. Jason Greaves, took a class Y nestic, nestics, as opposed to the more common amnestics, generally aid in the retention of memories and the prevention of their modification even in the face of anomalies that seek to disrupt this, excerpt from an introduction to anti-memetic countermeasures, Marion Wheeler, without authorization and entered the containment chamber. Dr. Greaves recorded a series of audio logs detailing his thought process during his encounter. Their transcriptions are preserved below for posterity. Dr. Greaves is available for questions regarding his experience with SCP-3211. Audio Log 3211-01 Dr. Jason Greaves, SCP-3211, Experiment Log 1. If you are hearing this and if, like me, you're souped up on some heavy ass amnestics, then you and me both know for sure that SCP-3211 is a dead pigeon. Why it's trying so hard to hide that from us, we'll never know. But, if you're not high as hell on class Y, then in less than six minutes you'll only remember me just rambling on about some random thing sat in a containment chamber. And of course, when that happens, all these logs will say is that there's nothing in the containment chamber at all. What I'm trying to do is work out exactly what SCP-3211 is, how it works and why it's trying so hard to hide. What does it want? No matter what I tried and who I spoke to, I couldn't get this test authorized. But it needs to be done. So I've taken a small dose of class Y mnestics and I'm doing this myself. I only have a couple of hours before the class Y stops helping me remember things and starts making me forget things, so I'd better get started. I've noticed something of a pattern emerging. Most people who walk into 3211's cell will perceive it as something totally new. Like, I see it as a dead pigeon, and there's no one else on the list who's perceived it as that. But, it's hard as rock and doesn't decompose any more than it already has. It's not just a dead pigeon. It has anomalous properties other than the fact that people can't see it for more than six minutes and then their memories after that are wrong. It seems to me like Foundation personnel, researchers and the like, will perceive it as something anomalous. People who are already familiar with the anomalous, who are expecting it to be anomalous, will remember it being something anomalous. But a D-class, for example, who is not familiar with the anomalous, will remember it being something mundane. Like a clay vase. It looks like it adapts to match the viewer's expectation. But I still don't understand why a dead pigeon is going to such lengths to protect itself in the first place. My head feels foggy. I don't know if it's the SCP or the mnestic starting to wear off. I actually don't know how long class Y lasts. I think I've narrowed it down to three stages. That seems to be the right word. So. The first stage is what you see when you walk into the cell for the first time, what SCP-3211 really is. It's a dead pigeon. Obviously, as soon as my mestics wear off, I'll forget that. And so will you. I assume you've taken mestics. The second stage is whatever memory SCP-3211 injects over itself when you've seen it for more than six minutes. Last time I saw it, I remembered seeing my son, who would be six. 
that was the second stage for me. The third stage is that you can't perceive it at all. Its disguise is complete and it's hidden from you. I think I know why it wants to hide. I just need to put the words into a sentence. It's getting hard to think. My thoughts feel like walking through ketchup. Oh God, my head is killing me. I'm certain it's the mystics. Class Z literally kills you when you take it, because the effect is permanent. Class Y won't kill you. I hope. I, uh, uh, might have majorly fucked up by doing this. It's really weird seeing all the things you can't usually remember. There's bugs everywhere, covering every surface. They're crawling all over it, too. I need to sleep. I just want to sleep. The floor is so much more comfortable than standing. It's getting hard to breathe. I don't know if that's my lungs closing up, or if it's just the... If it's just me forgetting how. At least I haven't forgotten what it was the first time I saw it. But I know for sure why SCP-3211 wants to disguise so avidly. It's right there, just in front of you. I'm surprised no one has seen it yet. It's just. It's just that it's not really. Really itself, right? I don't know how to take mystics, damn it. I only make them. I know how they're. How they're. I need to sleep. It's just sat there. Watching me. Just. Just make me forget already. I know your secrets, damn it. Why don't? Why can't? Why did you have to show him to me? Why did you have to take him away again? I don't think I'm going to survive. Why hasn't anyone come to get me? It is assumed that Dr. Greaves fell unconscious at this point. The remainder of the logs are mostly silent up to the point where a member of security staff noticed Dr. Greaves on closed circuit monitoring several minutes later, and called for help. Memetic detectors indicate that you were first exposed to this file more than six minutes ago. You are now considered post-3211. If you can still perceive the documentation as you originally recall it, please consult a researcher assigned to SCP-3211 immediately. Item number, SCP-3211. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures To reduce unnecessary exposure to SCP-3211, a warning message is to be placed at the start of this document. Level 4 authorization must be required to proceed. No information regarding SCP-3211 is to be present in any resources not exclusively available to researchers assigned to SCP-3211, including the warning message. Except in the event of an emergency necessitating knowledge of SCP-3211, no more than three members of the O5 Council and 10% of the population of any individual site are to have been exposed to information regarding SCP-3211 other than its existence. SCP-3211 is to be kept in a standard non-humanoid containment chamber. Access is to be limited to tests only. Description SCP-3211 is an unknown object, entity or concept. SCP-3211 exhibits a slow-acting but potent perception-altering effect. During the first six minutes of exposure to SCP-3211, subjects are able to observe and record SCP-3211 without issue. Once six minutes have passed, subjects will immediately and permanently be unable to perceive any direct information associated with SCP-3211, or observe SCP-3211 itself. This effectively quarantines information about SCP-3211 to only those who have been exposed to it for less than six minutes. For the purposes of this document, subjects who have already been exposed to SCP-3211 for at least six minutes will be described as post-3211 and those who have been exposed to it for less than six minutes will be described as pre-3211. 
post 3211 subjects are consistently adamant that they are able to perfectly remember its nature despite being unable to take in new information about it. However, it quickly becomes apparent that each post 3211 subject reports a different description for SCP-3211. A selection of such descriptions, in chronological order of their being reported, is provided below. Brand Microwave Oven Homo sapiens, Czech female, named Nero Zamin. Porcelain mug printed with imagery from a franchise, empty. Red cube, perfectly smooth, 12 cm on all sides. Columba livia domestica, common pigeon, corpse in suspended decomposition. The color puce. Clay vase, presumably ancient. DVD box set of the television series Friends, missing a disc from season 3. A small plastic badge imprinted with the number 3211. Of note is that descriptions of the object vary between post-3211 subjects. Observations indicate that pre-3211 subjects consistently agree on the nature of SCP-3211. However, once these subjects pass the six-minute threshold, they will disagree on what it is. This also applies to documentation. Personnel viewing this document universally report that it describes something else before it changed after six minutes of exposure. See Experiment Logs 3211-B and D for more details. Note that post-3211 subjects reporting unique descriptions is not universal. In several cases, the same description has been reported more than once. The fact that those who have been exposed to SCP-3211 are able to read the list above suggests that none of those descriptions are what SCP-3211 truly is. Several theories have been suggested. That none of the descriptions are true, and that the real SCP-3211 has yet to be seen. That none of the descriptions are true, and that the real SCP-3211 will reveal itself to someone worthy. That one of the above descriptions is true, and the rest are false. That all of the above descriptions are true, and that SCP-3211 is somehow several objects located in the same conceptual space. The mechanism through which SCP-3211 propagates this effect is currently unknown, though the current theory proposes that after the 6-minute threshold, SCP-3211 injects false memories over the original perception. Amnestics have proven to be effective on post-3211 subjects. They will forget SCP-3211 as expected, and upon re-exposure may perceive it as something new. A method of amnesticating only the false memories has not yet been found. Addendum 3211-A Experiment Logs 3211-B and 3211-D Experiment Log 3211-01 The purpose of this experiment was to establish a first-hand written description of SCP-3211 and then compare this description with another observer. D68134 was given a pencil clipboard and a single sheet of paper. He was instructed to enter the containment cell and produce a written description of its contents. 010 middle D 68134 enters the containment chamber with his eyes closed. 0 o'clock middle D 68134 is instructed to open his eyes. 008-middle.D68134 begins writing a description of SCP-3211. 604-middle.D68134 expresses surprise that he can no longer perceive SCP-3211. He expresses anger at not being able to read what he has written. 625-middle.D68134 
is instructed to leave the containment chamber. The description produced by D-68134 was retained as document 3211-01. Experiment log 3211-02. The purpose of this experiment was to compare the written description from experiment 3211-01 with another observer. D-8834 is provided with document 3211-01 and instructed not to read it. 010 middle dot D-8834 enters the containment chamber with her eyes closed. 0 o'clock middle dot D-8834 is instructed to open her eyes and compare the object in the room to the description on document 3211-01. middle dot D8834 confirms that the SCP-3211 matches the written description. 545 middle dot D8834 is asked to close her eyes. 615 middle dot D8834 is asked to compare the object to the written description again, from memory. 634 middle dot D8834 confirms that document 3211-01 describes a completely different object to SCP-3211. 644 middle dot D8834 is asked to open her eyes. She reports that she is neither able to perceive the object nor read document 3211-01. The following is a transcription of document 3211-01. The text produced by D68134 during experiment 3211-01. You know, the containment chamber is empty. There's nothing to describe. I don't understand why I have to write about an empty room. Addendum 3211-B, Empirical Data as an attempt to determine the true nature of SCP-3211, a collection of data has been recorded from SCP-3211 and is listed below. This data has been recorded only by pre-3211 researchers. It is currently unknown whether the readings are accurate, or if the reader perceives them to match their current perception of SCP-3211. Data Type Observation Full spectrum spectrophotometry SCP-3211 displays absorbances and transmittances in the visible spectrum consistent with standard background reading. Mass mass balance placed underneath the location of SCP-3211 did not detect any weight. Hume measurement SCP-3211 has a Hume reading consistent with baseline reality. Magnetism SCP-3211 is not magnetic. Visual observation by D9981 SCP-3211 is not visually present. Physical observation by D9981 no response. D9981 felt nothing at SCP-3211's location. Response to basic questioning by D9981 No response. Type Kappa Mimetic Sentience Detector Negative Response. Incident Log 3211-C On 2016-03-31, a researcher who was not assigned to SCP-3211, Dr. Jason Greaves, took a class Y Nestic, Nestics, as opposed to the more common amnestics, generally aid in the retention of memories and the prevention of their modification even in the face of anomalies that seek to disrupt this, excerpt from an introduction to anti-memetic countermeasures, Marion Wheeler, without authorization and entered the containment chamber. Personnel reported being unable to perceive Dr. Greaves until his unconscious body spontaneously appeared several hours later. Dr. Greaves returned to full health with medical care, but did not retain any details of his encounter with SCP-3211, claiming only that he wasted his time in an empty cell. 
Dr. Greaves recorded a series of audio logs detailing his thought process during his encounter. However, the content of these logs propagate the infohazardous effect, and are effectively devoid of information. Their transcriptions are preserved below for posterity. Dr. Greaves was severely reprimanded for not following standard testing procedure. Audio Log 3211-01 Dr. Jason Greaves, SCP-3211, Experiment Log 1. If you are hearing this and if, like me, you're souped up on some heavy ass amnestics, then you and me both know for sure that SCP-3211 does not exist. Why it's trying so hard to hide that from us, we'll never know. But, if you're not high as hell on class Y, then in less than six minutes you'll only remember me just rambling on about some random thing sat in a containment chamber. And of course, when that happens, all these logs will say is that there's nothing in the containment chamber at all. What I'm trying to do is work out exactly what SCP-3211 is, how it works and why it's trying so hard to hide. What does it want? No matter what I tried and who I spoke to, I couldn't get this test authorized. But it needs to be done. So I've taken a small dose of class Y amnestics and I'm doing this myself. I only have a couple of hours before the class Y stops helping me remember things and starts making me forget things, so I'd better get started. I've noticed something of a pattern emerging. Most people who walk into 3211 cell will perceive the cell to be completely empty. Like, I can clearly see that there is nothing here. There is nothing in the containment cell. SCP-3211 does not exist. It seems to me like Foundation personnel, researchers and the like, will perceive the containment cell to be completely empty. People who are already familiar with nothing, who are expecting nothing, will see nothing in the containment chamber, because it is empty. But a D-class, for example, who is not familiar with the anomalous, will remember the containment cell being empty, just the same. It looks like SCP-3211 does not exist at all. But I still don't understand why, if SCP-3211 does not exist, I insist on trying to prove that it does. SCP-3211 does not exist. My head feels foggy. I don't know if it's the SCP or the Mnestic starting to wear off. I actually don't know how long class Y lasts. I think I've narrowed it down to three stages. That seems to be the right word. So, the first stage is what you see when you walk into the cell for the first time, what SCP-3211 really is. It's nothing. Obviously, as soon as my mnestics wear off, I'll forget that. And so will you. I assume you've taken mnestics. The second stage is whatever memory SCP-3211 injects over itself when you've seen it for more than six minutes. Last time I saw it, I remembered seeing my son, who would be six. That was the second stage for me. The third stage is that you can't perceive it at all. Its disguise is complete and it's hidden from you. I think I know why it wants to hide. I just need to put the words into a sentence. It's getting hard to think. My thoughts feel like walking through ketchup. Oh God, my head is killing me. I'm certain it's the Mestics. Class Z literally kills you when you take it, because the effect is permanent. Class Y won't kill you. I hope. I, uh, might have majorly fucked up by doing this. It's really weird seeing all the things you can't usually remember. There's bugs everywhere, covering every surface. The containment cell is empty. There are no bugs. I need to sleep. I just want to sleep. The floor is so much more comfortable than standing. It's getting hard to breathe. I don't know if that's my lungs closing up, or if it's just the, if it's just me forgetting how. At least I haven't forgotten what it was the first time I saw it. But I know for sure why SCP-3211 wants to disguise so avidly. It's right there, 
just in front of you. I'm surprised no one has seen it yet. It's just. It's just that it's not really. It's not really there. It does not exist. I don't know how to take mnestics, damn it. I only make them. I know how there. How there. I need to sleep. I am alone in this room. The containment cell is empty. Just. Just make me forget already. I know that it does not exist. Why don't? Why can't? Why did you have to show him to me? Why did you have to take him away again? I don't think I'm going to survive. Why hasn't anyone come to get me? It is assumed that Dr. Greaves fell unconscious at this point. The remainder of the logs are mostly silent up to the point where a member of security staff noticed Dr. Greaves on closed circuit monitoring several minutes later, and called for help. This is the end of the case file for us, as we are now post 3211. However as for you dear listener we urge you to take a look at the case file yourself to see which iteration you will be initially exposed to. Link at the end of the description. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.